all right guys welcome back to the channel today's video is gonna be a little bit of a different one um, hopefully this works okay I know you're not supposed to hold your phone and drive so we'll try this new thing out uh, we are driving a little rusty so as you can see the background's not too beautiful most people don't believe I really drive this truck but this video is an important one and uh, it's got a lot of details about a uh, vehicle theft that we had one of three that happened um, to us in the year of 2020 slash 2021. Um, unfortunately, this one was a tow truck. This was early on when we did not sell a lot of tow trucks. It was one of the few that we had, and it was before we had our commercial location, and it was before we were fully fenced. So lots of changes since then, but I'll run you back a little ways. The reason I think this video is uh, pretty important. Uh, but what I do want to make a note of right up front is uh, this is in no way taken away from the police department, the investigators, anybody involved, um, because we appreciate all of our first responders. We appreciate all of our police officers, uh, firefighters. You know, all these guys are very good customers there. It's very loyal to us. And uh, the police force does a whole lot in cracking down now in our area and hope hopefully helping this not happen again. So long and short of it, this was an international tow truck that we had parked on the parking lot. Uh, we came in on a Saturday morning, noticed our gate that hadn't been opened in probably almost 20 years was open. Uh, didn't pay much attention. I figured Saturday we have a different staff that works on Saturdays. And I figured, oh, maybe one of these guys, uh, you know, open the gate, they need to get a truck out or something. Um, lo and behold, you know, it came to light eventually that the gate was open because the tow truck drove out of it and they smashed the lock off of it. Once we saw the smash lock, we knew. So we had good surveillance video. We'll uh, hopefully uh, can slip a clip in here of that, and you can see kind of the the unfolding of the actual gate getting open and the tow truck leaving. And uh, you can see there's multiple suspects involved. So we immediately turned it over to the police. They put a uh, investigative team in on it. All right. So take like 45 on this here. Sorry about the phone falling. I've never had a video. It took so many takes to get straight. But uh, anyway, this is where we were at. The truck was stolen. We made a report and uh, filed a claim uh, with the police department. And they started the investigation. They took all our information. They investigated our employees, uh, made sure we still had the keys, which we did still have the keys. We had all the paperwork. We had the title. All the things they've got to do, you know, any suspects, any customers test drove it lately. You know, we had to go back through our whole database of information about this truck, which was normal because this, again, was the third time this had happened in a short period of time. So that also brought up a lot of rumors and a lot of people on Facebook heckling on things. And I'll clear that rumor up real quickly. We did not take one dime of insurance money on this situation. Uh, these thefts were a huge detriment to our business and uh, we really had no choice we sat down and talked about it but we really had no choice but to take the claim you know take the uh, loss and not do a claim um, because what people don't understand unless you're in a small business or any business if you take a claim or a loss the insurance company's not just gonna forgive it and uh, they might not go up right away but what can happen is one they can cut off your insurance and we can't operate as an auto dealership without insurance. And we have four to 500 vehicles between personal and business. And on top of that, multiple businesses, multiple buildings, multiple facilities, multiple operations. So the other option is they're gonna go up. You know, Maybe they go up 10 or 15%. That's not a huge number, right? Well, our insurance is very expensive and it already goes up enough every year. So the second thing that was going to happen is a, a price increase on a percentage level. And, you know, if I figured on closing tomorrow, that wouldn't be a big deal. But I plan on being here for a long time. We've already been here 47 years. So that wasn't a very good option either. We really did not want to start off on that foot and, uh, and have a price increase. So we had to take our lumps and uh, deal with it. So, no, this was not an insurance scam. This was not anything, you know, insider, underhanded. Um, and thankfully none of my employees had anything to do with it. So that was good news. Um, but that's where things really fell off. Um, one week turned into two weeks, two weeks turned into three. We're communicating with this task force. We're communicating with the, uh, police department, uh, the actual investigator. And 
He's like, JW, you know how this goes. It's probably gone. It's probably stripped. It's probably shipped overseas. It's in a container somewhere. And I'm like, well, that's not what I want to hear, especially not being the third vehicle. But, you know, if that's what's the case, that's what's the case. We just kept following up. We kept following up until this uh, individual came to us and uh, threw a phone with an untrackable number. And he said, hey, I've got information on your tow truck. Okay, my ears perked up. I was ready to hear this. I said, you know, how do you want me to send the reward? He said, man, I'm not interested in the reward. He said, uh, this man has done me wrong, and he's done a lot of people wrong, and he tried to sell me this truck. And he said, I know it's your truck. Like, I know I'm in the towing business. It is your truck. No questions. And we'd had a lot of leads, which was what really was frustrating, is we had a lot of leads come in over time. We found your truck. We found your truck. Well, it turned out it wasn't our truck. But uh, this was a real one. He said, I'll give you all the information. I'll tell you where the truck is. He said, you know, I don't want anything in return other than this man to get what's coming to him. I said, cool, no problem. So we immediately funnel that information. Um, this guy even had a video of the truck. And just looking at the video, I mean, the strobe lights going, showing the bed, showing the truck, showing the wheels. It was my truck. 100% was my truck. So uh, we got all that information to the authorities and they started their process. And like I said, it just went week by week by week. It's not like you think. They don't just go bust the door down. They're having to get uh, more information, more evidence, surveil the property. Um, supposedly they were surveilling it by helicopter. They were surveilling it by land. And I'll drop a couple pictures in of the surveillance they were doing. You know, they were sending me pictures, which was pretty cool. And then everything just went cold. And I'm like, what's what's going on with my truck, man? Like, you know, this thing's going to get stripped. So we had taken apart. What's going on? And uh, they're like, look, we got to go through our process. The Commonwealth attorney's got to sign off or whoever, district attorney or, you know, whoever it is. Somebody has to do something and they got to get a search warrant. And, you know, that's what we're waiting on. So uh, we're getting ready to pull up on the video now, which... The video didn't record, but I did pull up, and I'm going to show you a walk around of the truck um, and a couple things that I want you to, to see. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on, so watch closely on that so maybe you can follow along with this investigation and uh, make more sense of it and uh, let you know how everything went down. Well, here it is, straight out the impound yard. So this was a pretty cool roll bag. It was a DT-466 pre-emissions with an automatic transmission. As you can see, it's been stripped. They were able to recover some of the parts and pieces and the transmission. So what was a running, driving, up for sale rollback is now stripped you can see where they broke the lock they also broke the ignition and I'm gonna zoom in on a spot right here because this is gonna be an important piece here in a few minutes so you can rewind and go back to this video but I'm just gonna zoom in right here of course the dash was there the seat was there everything was normal back when this happened but again, uh, there's the dash. Batteries are gone. The front clip was off. The motor is missing. Other than that, still a pretty intact truck with a rollback bed. If you're looking for a rollback bed as a donor, if you're looking for a nice chassis to redo if you got a good motor, there's nothing wrong with it. This truck literally drove away. We watched it on our security cameras drive away and be stolen. And we got really good images of the theft, and we got really good images of them. Oh, there's Rusty. Uh, of them stealing it, and uh, we got really good images of them breaking the lock off of our gate, and then to never be seen again. So let's see if I can make this work again. Uh, how do we flip this around? All right, we're back. So leaving here now, I'm not gonna dwell on it. I'm not gonna let it piss me off anymore because uh, this is where the aggravating part comes. So I got this call, so immediately we call, uh, it was in Maryland, so we call Maryland PD, tell them what's going on, we call our local, which we have a really good relationship, and again, by all means, these guys work hard, they put their lives on the line every day, 
so I don't want any disrespect to them but they're doing their jobs and they got bigger frist to fry is basically what it boils down to so we called the local detective that was working the case we put him with that and crazy enough they're on this huge task force um, which has a ton of government money pumped into it for auto theft like that's one of their big deals they want to so sorry about the technical difficulty one more time but this is the point where they were getting ready to bust the door down and uh, everything's going as it's supposed to go. We're excited. And then we get a call. I hate to tell you this, JW, but this is not your truck. We were beside ourselves. He said, look, things just didn't line up. It's just not the right truck. Maybe everything didn't line up. The stars didn't align. He said, this truck's a manual. The VIN number doesn't match. It's not the truck. It's just 100% not the truck. Okay, well, send me some pictures. Let me, you know, FaceTime me, whatever. So he's FaceTiming me. We're walking around. At this point, the truck is no front end, no transmission. He shows me the VIN number. I said, well, snap me. And, I, and he had to get off the phone to deal with his sergeant or whatever. I said, send me some pictures, man. I, I'm telling you, there's something there. Let's figure this out. Uh, you know, criminals change VIN numbers all the time. You know, things happen. Let's figure this thing out. So he starts snapping me some pictures, and now's when uh, that view of that dash comes in handy. So he's snapping me pictures of the dash. Thankfully, we still had pictures of this truck, which were saved because the truck was for sale. And on the website, if you look at any of our vehicles, we've got 30, 40, 50 pictures. So we had them all in a file. So I start looking at these pictures. I had them saved to my phone. I'm looking at the pictures he's sending me, and sure enough, it doesn't look right. Like the VIN number doesn't match. Uh, the radio was different. There was a ton of differences with the truck. Like there was just too many differences, honestly. And, uh, and I was very frustrated cause I was like, Hey, here's my $40,000 truck getting ready to come back in my hands. Yes. It's stripped. That sucks. Y'all waited. If you hadn't waited, we wouldn't have missed out on this truck. It wouldn't have been stripped. I was thoroughly upset. And then I was more upset that it wasn't my truck. So I get to going back through the pictures and uh, AJ, here's the spot where you'll insert that picture of ours. And then uh, if you rewind your TV, you can really be an investigator if you want. But there was tape over a hole on the dash and then there was some holes drilled in the dash. And I'm like, all right, well, these thieves didn't install a GPS on the dash and then take it off. And these thieves didn't uh, cover up a hole that wasn't there before. Let me do some looking and lo and behold, when we had it, there was a toggle switch where that dash has a piece of electrical tape over it. Well, that was a common place to put a switch, so okay, maybe that wasn't it. But if you look at the picture, and then you look at the video that I did, the holes in the dash are drilled in the exact same place. We already know the bed matched, but yeah, they made quite a few beds like that. But down to the, the rails were tarnished, everything was the same. Uh, the bed was my giveaway. but. Then the holes in the dash, then the covered up hole with a piece of duct tape, which he peeled back. Sure enough, it was the same size hole that the switch was. Okay, now we're on to something. They did such a good job on changing the VIN number of this truck. It fooled the investigators. They changed it on the frame with a stamping tool and made it look old so that you couldn't tell. Uh, they rubbed grease on it, I don't know what they did, but they made it look like it had not been done. And they also changed the VIN for the door. And there's a picture of that too, and what they did. Um, they literally typewriter, uh, whatever they did, it was good. It fooled the investigators. And that takes something, like this is a task force of investigators. Um, so anyway, by all means, we love, 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 love our law enforcement. They really look out for us. We're not always, you know, driving the most legal lifted truck or something like that. And, uh, you know, we're not out doing stupid things. And, you know, we, uh, we do get pulled over sometimes. Um, and on top of that, that's not what they need to be dealing with anyway. They need to be dealing with murderers and they need to be dealing with thieves and they need to be dealing with shoplifters. Um, but we don't need to give them an extra reason. But anyway, we like our like our law enforcement. We love our law enforcement and all our first responders. And this is not knocking them. But real quickly, if I hadn't have put as much effort and I had not really personally 
pushed on this investigation, found the vehicle ourselves, uh, tracked it down, stayed on top of the communication, pushed them to go in there. Uh, one, we wouldn't have recovered the truck at all. If we would have done it several weeks sooner, we would have recovered a running driving truck, I do have to believe, because the truck was running and driving just fine, and it looks like they backed it in this shop against the wall. Um, I still have thousands of dollars of towing fees that I had to pay for, um, for it to be impounded, for it to go to the storage lot, and for us to go pick it up in Maryland in pieces, but thank goodness, uh, give a shout out to uh, Stephen Holland with Blue Water great guy and he does a lot of stuff for us and he's uh, he's also a good friend um he treated me fair but i still had to pay you know he couldn't do it for free at a set an employee and you know whatever else but the truck's back the truck stripped the truck went from being a 40 some thousand dollar truck to a 15 000 20 000 dollar truck maybe with parts and pieces um it is recovered but that's the real world of some investigating and the way things go down and that's not the first time I've, i had an uncle get a set of four-wheelers stolen i had a cousin get a four-wheeler stolen and you know you really gotta push and social media these days can go one way or the other social media can really help you and that's where this came from it came from a social media reach out because they were notified and they knew about the truck and the theft and they were smart enough to put two and two together but um it can also go bad because if somebody knows you're on their track then they can you know dispose of or hide or you know whatever you know lots of things can happen so this is a real life recovery story and uh it really did happen and i'm really thankful it went down and i really do appreciate the you know the, the pd guys in maryland and the pd guys in virginia helping out um but you know it just goes to show they don't have enough time to handle everything and sometimes you got to do the digging yourself um we're very blessed like i said to end up with any of it because we had zero before like we had nothing not a bit we didn't have a single thing so at least we have a little bit uh, of recovered uh, asset and uh, you know long and short that's a real deal that's the story um check the dash and check the pictures it's pretty interesting and like i said i don't know what even my mom said she's like i don't have a clue how you put all that together and you know i was running on adrenaline like at this time it was it was exciting as jumping off you know and going skydiving because my heart was racing they were busting this guy's door down i was gonna get my truck they were gonna arrest somebody of course that didn't happen either because they say they didn't do the theft they bought it from somebody they were an innocent bystander you know i don't even know how court has come out on that you know there's nobody that we can prosecute there's no way that we can get any residual value um because at this point you know the person that actually stole it was not the person that um, ended up with it in their possession um you know of course they're never going to squeal probably because it's a, probably a bigger ring and there was some other stolen things recovered that day so hopefully somebody out there got their vehicle back or got something leading them in the right direction even though we didn't um but that's a real true life story of a theft that took place a recovery that took place um taught us a lot of things so our lot is fully fenced now our lot is cameraed up to the max the police department's actually putting in uh, license plate readers. So even if there's an accomplice, like one of the thefts, we saw the car across the street. Like they dropped the person off, they ran across, they stole the vehicle, they went back, the car followed them. Well, in the in the future when that happens, they're gonna get um, you know caught on camera by us and Chesterfield police uh, and state police is hooked to that too. So if they got any outstanding warrants and they pass by our car lot going north or south, their, their license plate's gonna be red. If they go about a block further up, there's another set of license plate readers on a um, uh, street si um, stop sign, stop light. And, uh, you know, they're going to be pretty well cornered. And it stepped our game up. We've actually got an employee that, that stands over the whole facility 24-7, uh, uh, works the night hours. And, you know, there are bad people out there and there are criminals out there. And sometimes they do get caught, even if the police don't do it. Sometimes it's the uh, working man that tracks things down, and, and thankfully we didn't get their hands on it. You know, I was I was fired up. Like, you know, I wasn't going to take no for an answer, and, you know, thank goodness there's police that unveil uh, sometimes to keep you out of trouble, or me out of trouble in this case, um, because you don't steal from people. Like, that's just not right. Um, and, you know, they'll get their justice. They'll get their karma. Uh, everything does happen for a reason, but 
this was a pretty good resolve to a bad situation and very pleased it went down like it did. Uh, I want to do this video also because some of my employees that are new to me weren't even with us at this time and they don't understand. But, you know, there was days of me waiting for this call to come back and waiting for this police officer to respond. And, you know, uh, I was on edge because, again, it wasn't so much about the money. It was the principal that I wanted my item back that was taken from me. This was not the most expensive one that was taken within that period. And thank goodness since then we haven't had any thefts. Uh, we've had some, some converter thefts and other things uh, that have been uh, actually prosecuted and caught. Uh, so good news there too. Some of those guys are off the streets with some pretty hefty fines because now that's a felony, not a misdemeanor. Um, and we've got police presence all the time now too, marked and unmarked that uh, stay around our facility. So it's really hard for somebody to do bad. It will happen again, I'm sure. Um, but for all the rumors, hopefully this dispels them and uh, life will go on. And now we've got a strip tow truck for sale if anybody's looking. But uh, Davis Auto Sales, Richmond, Virginia, Davis Drives. Uh, thanks for watching. This is a little bit of a different video, but uh, it was something that I've been meaning to do for a while, and the truck finally arrived back, and wanted to tell the whole story of how it went down. Thanks for all the leads. Thanks for all the reach outs. We had a whole lot of cold cases. There's a lot of black tow trucks out there. Um, but we knew which one was ours, and uh, we had a lot of pictures sent from gas stations. We had a ton of people reach out, uh, and thank goodness for that, and thank goodness for the following that we have. Um, those didn't lead anywhere because they weren't this truck. This truck literally went from chop shop to chop shop until it literally had heat on it to where it got chopped up, but it did mosey its way around for a while. It got some miles put on it. I think it was about a 1,000 miles put on it, so it wasn't out running tow calls every day, but it was on the street. Uh, and it was uninsured and if they would have hit somebody you know that would have been a major problem so there's more that that lies to these stories but um thank goodness this one was recovered there are some people that will hold some uh credibility to the problem and uh like i said other people's items were found and recovered too so some good did come of it um and we'll be on to the next one hopefully something else will show up and we can bring you some more uh now that we're doing more you know, we bring you some more live videos, but these pictures are pretty cool and the video is pretty cool. Um, and, you know, looking at the pictures from the past brought back some memories of, damn, that one picture sealed the fate of that truck. And uh, thank goodness we had that picture. And then he sent me that picture that day because they were about to walk out uh, without anything. And then after they started recovering more and more paperwork, I mean, they literally raided this place and... Uh, turned over some other good evidence so it worked out real well so thanks for watching guys click and subscribe not a normal video but we'll bring you some more here real soon thanks